Hello, hello, and welcome to the J League, Lee Gleaming, Glistening, with football stars from all over the world. Today, we'll be taking a close and cheeky, fantastic look at our Southeast Asian players bringing great vibe to our league. To name a few, Chanatip and Superchuk from Thailand, Arhan from Indonesia. And don't forget this month's Super Play Best Five. Now, people, time to kick off. What's up, people, and welcome once again to J League Monthly, giving you the creme de la creme of the J League. The ecstatic elements, you know, it's all up there, and always with the fantastic, always amazing. Sean Carroll, yes! I think it's a bit early in the afternoon to be drinking, isn't it, mate? Thanks for coming back, mate. <laughs> you thought I was going to leave you? Were you lonely <laughs> last month without me? Yeah, I was feeling rather lonely, <laughs> as you may have seen. Right, Sean, so let's get straight into it again, putting a big focus on our Southeast Asian players. None best to start than the great Chanatip himself. Okay, Sean, so here we have the great Chanatip. Yeah, he made a, obviously it was a big, big transfer when he went on to uh, to Kawasaki from Sapporo at the start of the season. Mm. Um, and he had a slow start to the season, I think, obviously fitting into a new style of play, fitting into new teammates. Um, and he hasn't come up with as many goals and assists as maybe we were used to seeing. But as you can see in the in the footage here, he's still got that technical ability. And, and Kawasaki have come through there. We hope, well, they hope they've come through the kind of the tough spell of the season. They're looking to be getting back up to form now. And yeah, as they close in over the last sort of 10 games or so and, and look to try and win their third straight title, you have to imagine that he's going to be one of the key players for them who could still decide it in their favour. Mm. Do you think um, this transfer is turning into a success on the way? Um, I think it's, it's probably a bit early to say. I mean, it was it was a, a big step up for him. He, he'd gone from being basically the main sort of creative player at Sapporo, the one the team was almost built around, um, to suddenly going into a team that had won three of the last four titles, mm. got a, a wealth of attacking talent um, already. So he had to fit in. They play a slightly different formation. So he was he's been asked to play in slightly different positions than maybe he's used to. Um, but I think if he can, yeah, if he can grow into his his style towards the end of this season, and then maybe next year or in a couple of years, once he's sort of fully embedded and, and his teammates are used to how he plays as well, I think he'll only go from strength to strength. Yeah. Definitely looking forward to that then. So, excellent. And Chanatip, outstanding and that he is. Um, but we kind of knew that um, already to a certain extent. Mm. So who else is involved? Here it is. Right, so Sean, here it is. That's a total of three, uh, five, eight, and total 11 players and playing the J League then, eh? Well, you've got, there you go. You've got, you've got a best 11 there. Like if we rewind the years, I think it was Recondin, if I'm pronouncing yes. that correctly. Um, back to 2013, was it? I like. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Ago. And you know, um, over the course of nine years, it's great to see all these players from Thailand, Vietnam, uh, Philippines, Indonesia, uh, Malaysia too, and slowly mm -hmm. integrating themselves. I mean, they're not, you know, um, first team players, all of them. But slowly but surely, I think they're going over the language barriers, aren't they? Well, that's the thing. I mean, there have been some, obviously, some fans from, from certain countries have been getting frustrated that their players are, are coming over here and not playing. Mm. But I do think that, yeah, you, you need to have these first steps as well. You can't go from nothing to suddenly they're coming over and, and playing every week. That I think we're going to see in the coming years that, that more and more players, these players here, are going to start to get more chances and on the flip side of course maybe maybe the japanese clubs maybe the coaches need to get show a bit more trust in the players give them opportunities so now let's put the focus um on a player who's uh, slowly but surely integrating himself into the first team actually an asian player a uh, celebrated has to be a super choke of sapporo okay here we go then the super choke what do you make of him then and well, he's only we've only seen a, a small amount of him so far. I think he's only made three three appearances since joining. Uh, but as we can see here, he got an assist. I think in his first game, mm. Sapporo picking up a big big win away to Shonen Belmare. Um, and you can see there, yeah, the the awareness. Okay, he was in behind and he had time. But often, 
when players do have time, that's when they make errors, they overthink. You could see the the awareness he had of his teammates, the quality to uh, to get the ball in. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like he's already a popular member of the team. He, he did come in with a reputation as being a player who can create, who can score. Mm. With Sapporo having lost Chanatip at the start of this season, they'll obviously hope that he can, he can fill that void. And over the course of the end of this season, they're obviously trying to escape relegation. But if the players are confident and when they're given chances, if they can take them, then there's no reason that they're yeah that Super Chok and, and the other guys cannot do what Chanatip did and, and really establish a reputation as as one of the the standout players in the J League. Mm. Another character that we want to be talking about is Arhan uh, from Indonesia. Now um, he made his debut back in July, but since mm. hasn't had um, the opportunity to impress. Let's have your thoughts then. No, yeah. Well, um, you mentioned the the fans, the Japanese fans being happy with Super Chok. There's a lot of Indonesian fans who are, are not best pleased that he's not he's right. not starting every I've single week for Verdi. Um, and I think yeah, he played against Tochigi. He, he got 45 minutes for Verdi um, early on in the summer, and he he looked he looked lively. He was getting involved. There was one one challenge where he was sort of chasing down with the Tochigi defender and getting stuck in. And I kind of yeah. like yeah, it was only 45 minutes, so. It's hard to get too much of a read, but I like I like the cut of his jib. He looked like he was he was willing to get involved. Yeah. Um he's still young. He's obviously shown in, in regional tournaments the ability he's got. It's not going to be easy to get minutes. But at his age, if he can use this season to just adapt and then maybe next year really start challenging for minutes. Um I think, yeah, I think he looks like he's got he's got the ability to make a mark. It's just a case now of yeah getting the, the trust of his coach and his teammates and, and being able to convince him that, you know, he should be picking mm -hmm. him instead of instead of someone else. Yeah, we definitely want to give the latest news about Arhan, um, especially to our Indonesians fans out there. So um, we had the opportunity to get hold um, of a journalist specializing in Verdi. So here it is. Uh, え、あるチャンスは出てくると思いますね。中3日、中2日のゲームが続く中でえ、アルハンの力を必要とする場面というのもおそらく出てくる。ま、そこでま、この前みたいなその土木戦までにあった課題みたいなものが解消されているということをま、祈
he sure has a lot to prove yet, you know, even with his credentials as, as being a, a World Cup. Here's some great news from the J-League. J-League Asia Challenge is back. And this time round is the 2022 J-League Asia Challenge in Thailand. How excellent. Um, and on the touchline from Japan, it's going to be Kawasaki Frontale and then Hokkaido Contadori Sapporo. And from Thailand, our latest and champions, Bree Ram United FC. And coming in number two is BG Patum United FC. Now, Sean, this is going to be um, happening for the first time in three years. Um, are you excited? I think this is going to be, yeah, especially this this time around, I think it's going to be someone to really look forward to. It's happened, as you said, it's happened a few times before. We haven't had it for three years because obviously mm -hmm. of coronavirus and just all the travel restrictions and everything. So the fact that right. we haven't had it for three years, I think, yeah, they're, they're going to give Kawasaki and, and Sapporo a real challenge. Uh, it should be some, yeah, should be obviously, in terms of the football, should be great. The fans in Thailand will obviously be delighted to see... Uh, yes. Chanatia Ban and Super Chop back as well with their, their Japanese clubs. And I think, yeah. Okay, so J League Monthly, thank you so much, Sean. And um, that's it for us. Um, yeah, make sure to tune in on our next um, time round too. Um, but one more thing, very essential, is getting your comments. You know, our J League fans from Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, all, all over the place, not just in Southeast Asia, but all over the world, even from Africa and from back in the UK or uh, from the States and wherever, you know. But tell us what's your thoughts. And so we'll uh, give an adieu, farewell, and with Super Play and Best of Five. Thank you, Sean, and take care. See you guys next time around. Bye-bye. Take care. Ciao.